Welcome back. We're talking about the horrific terror attacks in Turkey that left dozens dead and hundreds injured. Uh, with me, of course, still is Akan Ademir, uh, a former member of the Turkish Parliament. Ali Chenar is with the Turkish Heritage Organization. Hakan Jamuz is a political commentator. And David Gartenstein-Ross is a counter-terrorism expert. Welcome back uh, to you. Hakan, uh, I want to get to you. Um, recently, Turkey has sort of shifted its foreign policy a little bit. And in the wake of uh, these ISIL attacks, can you see that continuing? Uh, I'm talking about a rapprochement with Russia after the down plane over Syria, rapprochement with Israel after the Gaza blockade uh, killed Turkish citizens, uh, a move more towards the U.S. position of combating ISIL in Syria, um, but still with the policy of getting rid of uh, Assad first. What's going on and how do you think this horrific attack will reinforce that or, or, or change it? Uh, certainly, Turkey is pivoting back uh, to the West, pivoting back to its traditional foreign policy. And this is uh, a move I, I do welcome. Uh, many see this as, as a drastic U-turn, because Turkey was uh, on, on a collision course with Israel, with Russia, uh, with Egypt, uh, even at one point uh, contemplating uh, substituting the European Union and NATO with Shanghai Cooperation Organization. So today I think Turkey is coming back to its traditional, pragmatic, uh, more realist foreign policy. Uh, and uh, in fact, in, in the next couple of weeks, we might see new moves trying to rebuild relations uh, with Egypt and even uh, maybe start uh, on, on a more pragmatic transactional relationship uh, with the Syrian regime. Now, uh, the, 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 so you the, mean dumping, uh, ousting uh, President Assad? David, could, could you see that uh, as a foreign policy priority go lower as a result <clears throat> of this attack? I, I think it's possible. I think it's unlikely because of how deeply they're invested in getting rid of Assad. Uh, but look, I, I think one of the big problems that Turkey faces on the foreign policy front is that you're seeing what I would call a Pakistanization of Turkey. If you look at the militant groups that have you know, relatively free reign to operate and are being supported by the Turkish state, you have groups like Ahrar al-Sham, Jabhat al-Nusra, and uh, the coalition of which they're a part, uh, Jaysh al-Fatah. And that's a problem. I mean, the borders, uh, I agree that, that Turkey has been trying to stop ISIL from crossing the borders, but at the same time, a lot of the border towns are very ugly places to go. I mean, you've had uh, people go there and get murdered, and, and um, very bad things happen in those areas where these groups have a lot of influence. So as long as, as getting rid of Assad is such a high priority that jihadist groups have relatively free reign, and I'm saying this not in a way to uh, judge their, their desire to get rid of Assad. He is a brutal dictator. But this is going to create fundamental problems for the Turkish state that are going to be very, very hard to deal with. Uh, uh, Hakan Jamis in London, do you agree with that? The Pakistanization of Turkey and in the light of this, uh, a, a reorganization of foreign policy goals to take on ISIL, perhaps more than depose uh, President Assad in Syria? The, the wording I don't agree with, because uh, you're talking about a weak state, concept of weak state with that. Turkey is not a weak state. Uh, therefore, I don't foresee that kind of Pakistanization of Turkey happening. However, there is a point to be made there, and the point is this. They did have a very ambitious foreign policy, especially when it comes to Syria. Yes, the, the, the whole idea was that within a few months of this whole uprising starting, they would, they would end up in, uh, in Damascus. And uh, as then the Foreign Minister Ahmed mm. Davutoglu said that they would have a prayer sessions in, in Damascus within the three months, he said. Yeah. But that was uh, over ambitious statements uh, after almost uh, five years of infighting going on and uh, misery and infighting. We're still not there. And Assad is there. If Assad is going to go, it's going to go through uh, political uh, uh, arrangements that will be made by the global players and not just Turkey. Maybe it's the realization of that somehow makes Turkey change the way they approach their foreign policy. Uh, Reapportionment with Russia is a very, very important, significant sign that uh, Turkey will want to take active part in now a uh, process of uh, reshaping the region, uh, because Russia is a big player in there. Uh, Israel and Turkey's foreign uh, reapportionment issue has been going on for quite some time. It's kind of detached from it, but, uh, but it is still, you could put it into the same uh, mindset change that's happening in Turkey at the moment. Uh, Ali Chinar, do you see uh, also a change in the approach to 
the Kurds, considering uh, ISIL is seen by others in the region, especially the US, of course, uh, who are influential, uh, as less of a problem than ISIL? Well, I mean, still there is an issue with the Kurdish uh, groups, especially with the PYD, since uh, for Turkey, PKK and PYD are the same as terrorist organizations, and uh, Turkey cannot uh, agree with some Western allies on the PYD issue. So it will continue to be a big problem uh, in the region as long as the Western doesn't support PYD and link to P PKK. So uh, this is a big issue, and we still see a big PKK attacks eastern and southern part of Turkey, and uh, every 20 security personnel like kills every, every week. Mm. So this is a big uh, terror threat. Uh, and continues for a big terror threat. So I don't think there will be a big change. Turkish army is taking a big action uh, on PKK, not the Kurds. We need to also differentiate as well. So some uh, media also making a big mistake, labeling the Kurdish groups and PKK the same. So uh, the policy is not going to change. The Turkish government is taking, a, as I said, strong action uh, on PKK and is not going to change. I just want to go back to this whole idea of taking on the Kurds and, and the differences in the approach of ISIL. Other governments have found this uh, too. You know, when you have an insurgency, it's, it seems easier to defeat in militarily. But ISIL is amorphous. It can inspire people uh, over the internet. It's almost like battling an idea. Uh, neither the PKK nor ISIL could simply be defeated through security measures, because this is also about uh, winning the hearts and minds of people. Uh, first of all, we have to accept that uh, the pro-Kurdish uh, HDP party uh, has a, a wide followership. And the more Turkey pushes it out of the parliament through the lifting of parliamentary immunity, the more Kurdish youth mm -hmm. would be disenfranchised and pushed to radicalism. On the ISIL side, uh, but, uh, we just mentioned 8% of the population being sympathetic uh, to I ISIL. Uh, and uh, this is simply not a matter of solely a security issue. Uh, how can Turkey come up with uh, policies uh, to win the hearts and minds of these people from radicalism, extremism, hate and bigotry toward democracy and uh, pluralism? Hakan, you wanted to jump in here in London? Yeah, I, I actually wanted to just make a point, and with all due respect to my previous colleague, uh, I don't know where he gets that 8% from. 8% is millions of people. And I actually don't think there's 7 million uh, people in Turkey who actually somehow s uh, show sympathy or support ISIL. Can I give and I also would like to make a comment about the second thing he said about the HDP. The immunity of the uh, parliamentarians in Turkey has not been lifted only for HDP members. It's been lifted for everybody who has a case against them, whether they've been accused of a crime, a basic crime, or a crime of supporting terrorist organization like PKK. So the immunity issue is, is applicable to all MPs, not just HDP MPs. And because HDP MPs have actually been caught red-handed in supporting PKK. So uh, I just wanted to correct or make comment about what he said. A kind of quick word in response to that before you move on. Sure, sure. Uh, Pew Research, which is one of the most trustable, dependable institutions in the world, found 8% sympathy. And it has been also corroborated by numerous polls within Turkey, for example, Metropole polls. So I think this is uh, quite a factual number. When it comes to the HDP and the lifting of parliamentary immunities, sure, on paper, the immunity has been lifted for all deputies in the Turkish parliament. But anyone who follows Turkish politics know that, knows that this is the, the, the sword of Democles on the HDP, and this was a move to corner the HDP. So you're saying it, it was done to, uh, because of the Kurdish threat, sure, not sure. because all, of anything all, else? All independent observers would ag agree on this, and I think this is a bad idea because we have to win the hearts and minds of Turkey's Kurdish citizens. We don't have long, but David, I want to just talk about President Erdogan here. This attack, what does it mean for his presidency going forward? And that's a great question. I mean, it means a number of different things. Uh, one of them, of course, is um, focusing in on ISIL. I think that they've already um, actually been fairly vigorous in that regard. I think the second one is what I raised before, the issue of what about all of these various non-state militant groups that have been a part of the Syria puzzle. Um, I think it's an opportunity for him to take a different tack, though I'm a little bit skeptical that he will. Ali Chinar, final word. What does this mean for President Erdogan going forward? He is not without controversy inside and outside Turkey. Right, President Erdogan, he said the ISIL right now, fighting against ISIL is the first priority. 
and it's a new statement for us as well. So his tone, I think, is, is getting uh, stronger uh, in the country, but we mm. also see that he wants a peace uh, in, in the region, especially with Russia and Israel, and we see lots of communication between United States officials and him and his leadership. Okay. So I, I think it will be a, a good opportunity for Turkey uh, to fight against ISIL and PKK.